I want each and every one of us, because you have told the nation that tomorrow will be very silent. We know tomorrow is your birthday, and we are here today. Tomorrow, this gathering obviously will not come on behalf of the religious leaders and traditional rulers. We want to all join hands to say happy birthday, Mr. President. Long life and prosperity. May God Almighty continue to give you strength, wisdom, and that capacity to continue to do all the things God has actually called you to do for our nation. May God Almighty continue to be with you. We will all join with one voice. So all, I want you all to join me and say, Happy Birthday, Mr. President. Happy one more time, Happy Birthday, Mr. President. One more time, Happy Birthday, Mr. President. Let's give our president a sound round of applause. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good. How are you, President? Loving President. May the good Lord, may the good Lord, may the good. We wish you, we wish you, we wish you. May the <laughs> well, Highnesses, religious leaders, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Very good evening to you all. Your Excellency, permit me to express our sincerest gratitude and appreciation on behalf of the Muslim Ummah in the whole country you know, uh, by organizing this very lavish iftar dinner this evening. I'm standing here wearing two caps. First, as uh, chairman traditional council of Kabina State, and then secondly, and most importantly in this occasion, as representative of His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, who is currently in Saudi Arabia performing Umrah. Um, I would like to uh, remind all of us here that Ramadan period is a period of reflection, a period of uh, compassion, a period of empathy, and a period of uh, strengthening relationships you know, with different people. That is a period of reaching out to various people. And I believe it's in that spirit that you organize this uh, iftar you know, so that at least we can all bond together as one nation, as one you know, common destiny. I'm particularly happy you know, to see the whole country in this room. Uh, representatives from the Muslim community and also from the Christian community are all seated here before you, Mr. President. Um, with this, I'd like to say a big thank you to you. And we pray to Almighty Allah to bless you with good health, long life, so you can continue to steer the ship and take us to the promised land. We've seen what you've done in many areas, especially in the security management of this country. Uh, we are witnesses. Uh, you are doing a lot you know, to ensure that uh, we are back on track and also in the area of our economy. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to also take this opportunity on behalf of the people of Kaduna State especially you know, to thank you uh, by sending His Excellency the Vice President, which I was in his team you know, when the incident at Tulumbiri took place. He led us to uh, Kaduna and uh, 
the entire people of the state are very pleased with what you have done. And I'm sure His Excellency the Vice President has conveyed the message back to you and also our amiable governor. Um, Your Excellency, uh, His Majesty has spoken so eloquently on the security situation of this country, which we believe you are doing your best, you know, to see that the entire country is safe, you know, for everybody to leave. So we are optimistic, we are hopeful, and we are, you know, behind you solidly, you know, to ensure that we are back in our track as one indivisible country. The entire Muslim community are grateful, as I mentioned, and uh, I believe uh, it's the same thing, you know, that would be mentioned by, by uh, the Secretary General of the Christian Association of Nigeria. Um, we believe in this country, and we hope and pray that Nigeria will remain as one indivisible entity uh, with the um, approach and inclusivity, you know, uh, in this current administration. And finally, uh, with your permission, Mr. President, I'll be pleased if we can invite the chief imam of the National Mosque here in Abuja to pray for you on your birthday, as the Onyo Fife has said. We might not be here tomorrow. We we'll have to uh, return to our base uh, so that he can pray for you, pray for the nation uh, before the end of this program. So with your permission, Mr. President, I would like to hold it on the chief of the Mount of the National Mosque. Thank you. Someone. Our eminent royal fathers, too numerous to mention, our eminent religious leaders, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of my boss, our leader, President Bola Ahmed Chinebu GCFR, who is the Jagaban Borbu, who is the Ashwaju of Lagos, who is the Ode Mary Igbo One of Ibia State, who is the DK Ki Nomara One of Ebonyi State, who is also the Ari of Ile Oluji and Ari Abu of Ekbalad. The other chair is listening. On behalf of Mr. President, I want to most profoundly thank you for honoring his invitation to be at this iftar. This gathering transcends religious and ethnic boundaries. As we come together as one nation, bound by our shared humanity and our collective aspirations for peace and social harmony. Each one of us here has a pivotal role to play. As custodians not only of our rich religious and cultural heritage, but also as guardians of our conscience and stewards of our collective destiny. Each one of us here can draw strength from what the president is wont to say, that we are members of the same family, living in the same house, but sleeping in different rooms. Your Royal Highnesses, our religious leaders, let us draw strength from our shared humanity and build bridges of brotherhood and sisterhood that transcends our ethnic and religious divides. What binds us supersedes whatever 
that divides us. Let the light of love smolder the darkness of division and hatred. The president is quite glad that the Ramadan season coincides with the Lent season. And here we are under the same roof. People of different backgrounds and people that have come together as one family, as one nation, with a shared destiny. Your royal fathers, the president means well for the nation. He wants to redefine the meaning and concept of modern leadership. For so many decades, the Puel subsidy was an albatross round the neck of the Nigerian nation. But he took the painful bullet, the painful decision from day one to hit the ground running. Now the economy is turning the corner. Now the prophets of doom are going silent. They were anticipating that Naira will go to 5,000 to the dollar. Now the dollar is crashing. And they are counting their losses. And they will continue to count their losses. And the economy, by the grace of God, is bouncing back and in full force. We need to rally around him. We need to align ourselves with him as we navigate the treacherous water of banditry and insecurity. We have to congratulate him for the recovery, for the rescue of the students of Kariga in Kaduna. When those students were kidnapped, there was loud rumblings in the social media, in the local media, in the international media. But when they were rescued, there was deepening silence. That goes to show that in some clients, they are still in the campaign mode. We are now in the pace of governance. Let us transcend our differences. Let's work for the good of this nation. Because the hope for the black man rests with this nation. Wherever Nigeria goes, that's where Africa goes. On behalf of my principal, I wish to most profoundly thank each and every one of you for honoring this invitation. I wish to once again reiterate that we can draw strength from the pact that the sum of the whole is always greater than its parts. Thank you so much. And may God guide you back to us. Thank you very much. My dear friend, and a very good leader for that matter, standing for Sultan, the Emmy of Sultan. Thank you. All other religious leaders are present. I've enjoyed a very good dinner. <laughs> to all the senior government officials, I extend my respect and regard and the the Emir whose kingdom Give me Jagaban. <laughs> right here.
to all of you. I say thank you very much. I didn't expect this great turnout. I'm grateful. There is a unique opportunity in our getting together that is reflective of the diversity of this country. Various religious leaders, the Christian, the Islamic leaders, getting together to share a meal, to extend the spirit of togetherness, to show understanding of our nation, of our culture, the diversity, the richness, the courage of the nation. That's what you are. Our conscience, our common heritage. Then what is left? You give us courage as political leaders to move on, to think and perform to really care and love this country. The way you get up to pray for Nigeria. The method you use is one nation. The change of mindset that is needed to build a country of love, perseverance, resiliency, and goodness. It is our country. I told a congressman from America yesterday that, oh, thank you for allowing me to study in your country. But I won't want to come back to live there, hibernate. This is a lovely country, Nigeria. The love we share, each other's neighborhood, extension of love. It's a community. Yes, we are challenged. That is true. No nation that is not currently challenged one way or the other. But it is with God-given talent and resolve of all of us to say that we will overcome the challenges and turn it to prosperity by the grace of God. We will. We will turn it around. There is a very good bright light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> and believe it also that somewhere in the eyes of the storm is some corner of calmness and joy for those who we serve with faith and determination. We've seen the challenges of insecurity. Yes, many nations go through it. Some of those prosperous nations today, if they look back, they will find in the history 
of their nation, bloods on their snow. A fourth battery to be what they are. Maybe our weather that is beautiful, our land that is rich, our parents that is loving, as spoiled us. They didn't win us early enough from breastfeeding. <laughs> so every minute we have to spare, we can cry of hunger. We didn't forget our childhood. But we will believe in the prosperity and the love and care of that woman, the mother, Nigeria. No, so, I'm with you. No matter what degree of lamentation is, my own is don't give up. As long as we don't, as long as we are determined to change our country, it is our own to change. Nobody, no, all these things, America, Britain, France, and others, <laughs> they can't love us better than ourselves. <laughs> and if we get there, some of you are going to, you know, only primitive and make her and you see the glittering of light and everything. Yes, we have it, we can do it. You go to Dubai, you see the glittering and all of that. Yes, we can do it. We can drive on good roads like they have on their infrastructure. We can have education that is first class. And Nigerians are respected. We'll give you the assurance as a government that you will be our priority. But not because of you, it's just because of your children. Who do we hand over to? Share that love with us. Believe in the understanding of temporary challenges. Yes. Nigeria is strong, has a good reputation across the world. No military men respect us better than we respect ourselves. No terrorist, no terrorist can defeat our spirit. No matter how bad the target, the soft targets. You know, going to the backyard of a, of a school in, in Koriga and evacuating some children and giving the wrong figures, it doesn't defeat us. It doesn't. We have together, bond together, and deal with them. Only yesterday, I was at the funeral service of the 17 heroes of Nigeria. Be buried. Well, some of their wives are pregnant and little kids in their lives. The love of the nation is in your hand. The prayer is in your mind. Pray for our country. 
educate our children. All the members of our church and mosque, the sermon we give to them is important. We don't condemn your own nation. Ah, me, you, man. And our father will say, no matter how slippery the bottom of your child, leave the bead there. Leave the bead there. This is your country. Don't condemn it in sermons. Don't abuse the nation. Leadership are meant for changes. Yes, this leader is bad, fine. Wait until it's time to renew his mandate and say no. But don't condemn your country. Don't curse Nigeria. It's a beautiful land, land of prosperity. I just have a full belly of uh, rice, my man, everything. So before I overly digest it, <laughs> I want to say thank you once again. Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates.